Welcome, welcome, my lovely goblins and ghouls. As you can see by the title today, I'm gonna be reacting to all of my Halloween Ends predictions. If you're new here, that is the third predictions video that I've made in the style of like a bingo card format. I try to make these videos as far in advance as humanly possible, so the one I'm reacting to today, I think I made about nine months ago. That gives me enough time to forget what my predictions were, so then when I can react to them, it provides for better content. We also have a ton of new members on this channel since my Halloween Ends review came out, and boy, that video was messy. The comment section too. Ugh. Grateful nonetheless for this recent growth to my channel and so welcome if you're new. You know, let me know down below because I didn't get to all my comments from my Halloween Ends review. Anyway, I say that we just dive right in. I'm gonna make a prediction for this reaction that I think uh, maybe five of my predictions were right. I think I was way, way off on most of them. So we are about to find out. They are about to find out. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love that video. Oh, let's do this, yeah. And I know that I did this video during my bang era. I feel like my hair is gonna look really gross in it. Where is it? That video got 10,000 views, where have I been? Here we go, lads. Now, why am I making this video in February? You might be asking. I just claim it to be Halloween all year round in this household. I mean, today I'm wearing a Halloween night shirt. Time is made up, I don't abide by the man-made calendar. <laughs> She's so edgy. <laughs> And also because by the time that Halloween ends comes out, I want enough time to have passed where I can react to these predictions. I did the same thing for the most recent Scream where in March of last year, I made all of my Scream 5 predictions and then I just reacted to them last month. So that's why this video is happening now and not like in September. By the way, I have some new decor today. If you didn't notice, guess who just met Nick Castle? It's still here, the picture's still here. Oh, it's not in the frame. Nick Castle is such a sweet little man, by the way. So lovely in person, and he actually picked out this picture for me to get signed. Also, I kind of miss my bangs. They don't look that good here, but I swear that they did look pretty good on me. I really wanted to re-watch a bunch of the movies of the franchise, like the original H2O in particular, and then like the newest trilogy movies. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't re-watch H2O before doing this, but I am actually planning on doing a comparison video between Halloween H2O and Halloween Ends. Though now now with everything that I know about the movie, I'm thinking it might be a more appropriate comparison to do Halloween 3 with Halloween ends. Especially because there have been so many specific homages to Halloween 3 in the whole newest trilogy. I don't know. No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because H2O is another like showdown between Michael and Lori. So, but yeah, I don't know. I could do both. No, I can't. That's too much. I guess let me know your thoughts. Also, my subs have heard this next part a thousand times, but I just have to reiterate for anyone new here. I don't watch trailers and I I don't like knowing anything before I go into a movie. And if it's a director I like, I don't even want to know a log line. I don't even need to see the poster. Like with Jordan Peele's Nope, I'm not going to watch the trailer. Don't want to know what it's about. Oh, <laughs> oof. She was so young. She was so hopeful about Nope. Nope and Halloween Ends were two of my most anticipated movies of the entire year, probably like right behind the menu. And Nope ended up being a total disappointment. And I didn't watch the trailers for Nope. I didn't watch the trailers for Halloween Ends. With Halloween Ends, I still didn't like the movie, but I was still really grateful that I didn't watch the trailer because everybody had their expectations set that it was gonna be just all about the showdown between Michael and Lori. That's what all the marketing told us. Like, I don't even think the character of Corey was in the first two trailers, right? So nine months later, ain't a damn thing changed. But that's another good point that you should know if you're new here. I don't do these with the intention of like doing a bunch of research and like actually figure out what's gonna happen. So a lot of my predictions end up being super zany and just for fun, but yeah, just, just a little disclaimer. First, I want to guess, where are we going to begin? On that note, this is your spoiler warning. I'm going to be spoiling Halloween Kills, probably Halloween 2018. I mean, like, probably the whole franchise. That won't include the entire franchise, but it might include stuff from, like, Halloween 2 or H2O. Let me just start out with the things that I do know, against my will, I might add. I know that there will be a time jump. It's a few years into the future, so there's a lot of room to guess where we're going to start with Halloween Ends. And I also have to say, it's kind of weird that they did this, I, I am glad that the entire trilogy is not going to take place on one night. But 
since when? <laughs> I, I should hear her out first, but like that doesn't really track because now I wish that the whole trilogy took place on one night. But Halloween Kills ends in such an emotionally charged way. I just don't know how they're gonna be going from 9,000 back down to zero at the start of ends. Because I could be wrong, but I feel like it's gonna be hard to beat the energy of Halloween Kills. It started at 100 and ended at 9,000 and I just, I, I don't know. It's hard to guess where they're gonna start from there, but I have a couple ideas. <laughs> I even talked about this in my review because there was an interview with Jamie Lee Curtis where she was like, there's no way that you could start Halloween Ends at the pitch of the ending of Halloween Kills. And here I was just dead wrong. <laughs> For my first prediction on where I think we're going to begin in Halloween Ends, I think that Allison will probably get out of Haddonfield. She does get out of Haddonfield at the end. <laughs> like I was wrong, but I was right. You know, it does happen. I'm gonna count that one. I think maybe she's gone to college. She's probably drifted away from Lori a little bit. She's just doing her best to put distance between her and Haddonfield. She does go to college because she becomes a nurse and she does get distant from Lori because at one point in the movie, she totally turns on her and she wants to leave her and she's like, you're the one who's capable of harm. So, I mean. Or maybe she moved away with members of her dad's side of the family or something. But I also, I don't know because maybe he was from Haddonfield too. So there's my first prediction, but I also think that the opposite thing could happen and they're both equally plausible. I think it's possible that Allison could move in with Lori oh? and they're both kind of leaning on one another and dealing with the fallout of losing so many people they love. So we have Allison and Lori living together in grief. Yes. Yes! Wow! Two for two. It can really only go downhill from here, I think. And I'm not really sure which one feels more true to the characters. It felt like in Halloween Kills, they all really confronted their grief and they went out swinging, but they could walk back on all of that with the death of Karen, I mean, with the death of her dad, with her boyfriend. And Lori lost her daughter, which all of that obviously leaves lasting damage. And kind of a subset of that prediction, you know, you have the other hand where they've already experienced so much loss that maybe now they're hardened. Hmm. See, this is making sense and it's part of why Lori's whole shift in character was so jarring to me because Karen is such an afterthought in Halloween Ends. It's so bizarre. Like they show a picture of her in a frame. Lori gives Allison the wedding rings of her parents and then that is it. Like there, there's no mention of them at all beyond that. Very, very strange. But on the third hand or fourth hand, where are we at now? They set up so much of Lori's relationship with Officer Hawkins that I feel like maybe they will be partners now. I don't think that it would be in Lori's nature to get married again, but maybe they live together. Maybe they took Allison in. So the three of them have kind of come together to try to rebuild their life. I wish, I wish. Ugh. I mean, at the ending, they do kind of signify to us that maybe there is a happy future for Lori with Hawkins. Or not like a happy future, like it's a very sad ending, but there is still that little glimmer of hope. I won't give this one to myself though, obviously, because that didn't happen. But still, she's on the right track, methinks. Moving on, I have heard tell on the internet yet again against my will that now there will be a pandemic theme to the movie. I don't know if it's gonna be COVID or if it's gonna be something made up, but this worries me. It worries me deeply, loves. <laughs> as it should have, as it should have, babes. <laughs> Well, this was true. I don't know what the prediction is gonna be, but the central theme of the movie was kind of like the pandemic of misinformation, basically. The people of Haddonfield were turning on Lori of all people, which is ridiculous. And one of the main culprits is like the most famous DJ in town who was just constantly spewing misinformation. So yeah, a lot of it does kind of reflect the last couple years of the pandemic. It's going into this predictions video because I do feel like I saw it confirmed by David Gordon Green that there is going to be a pandemic in the Halloween universe Universe, as well as some more politically charged commentary. So for my fourth prediction, COVID has reached Haddonfield. Okay, so that was a little bit off. <laughs> the major con is that they started this trilogy long before we were in a pandemic. So I'm like, did you just change your plans? Yeah, I think they did. I had found this interview with Paul Brad Logan, where he said that there was never a plan to have all three movies take place on the same night. And then there were a bunch of people in my comments that were like, well, that writer's full of shit, or like, well, that writer came on the project, 
project late or he wasn't involved with the first two installments. It's something to that effect. People were commenting and telling me that uh, that's not true, that the original plan was in fact to have all movies take place on the same night. So I'll say I think I was right to be worried. Halloween Ends ended up being a total mess and even David Gordon Green in interviews was saying like, oh yeah, I would call up Jamie the day before we were gonna shoot a scene and I'd be rewriting it asking her for advice. That's never a great sign. So yeah, I think that my worries were valid here. I just worry that they scrapped more of the original plans than it was worth to include something like this. Because mid-trilogy, these guys were just like, yeah, let's change the very baseline rules of this universe. And get into even more politically charged commentary, which is just like, why? <laughs> That's fair, that's really fair because one of my main complaints about Halloween Ends was that they kept beating us over the head with the commentary in the movie. It was just like so in your face and so obvious. My intuition is so strong. It's almost like I'm a witch or something, hmm. Halloween Kills was loaded with social commentary, which I appreciated actually. But now I'd love to get back to the story itself and the characters we love, their development, the plot development with Michael rather than focusing more on the world at large. Oh, honey, sweetie, baby, I'm like, I just want to see the development of my favorite characters and that was the opposite of what we got. Oh, tragic. <laughs> in Halloween Kills, the commentary is just literally running at you dead on, so it was a little bit more intense. So I don't know, it would just be nice to take a break from that and get back to a more basic Halloween kind of story for the culmination of the trilogy, but I do trust that it'll all come together for a reason. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, it's painful, it's painful. Yeah, I really thought because the commentary about mob mentality and stuff was so strong in Kills, they would kind of take things back to basics. Ah, oh, God, they really, they didn't do that though. They didn't do that, did they? It's just so sad. <laughs> okay, what's the next prediction? I think I've only made like four so far, God damn. Halloween Kills was the first movie of the entire franchise to give me a nightmare about Michael the night that I watched it. He was the most visceral and disturbing portrayal of the shape that I feel like the franchise has ever given us. Oh my god, and then they totally neutered Michael for Halloween Ends. It's like the exact opposite of everything that I wanted. <laughs> Though I do think that there were angles that they could have taken with Michael and Halloween Ends that are like similar to what they did without butchering it quite so badly. I even would have maybe been okay with like Michael crawling into the sewer to die after Halloween kills and then maybe Corey ends up finding him and he takes his mask and then Michael kind of would become the red herring. I know that everybody would have been probably equally as pissed about that, but I, I don't know. I can't say for sure. I feel like I would have liked it better than what we got. And also there was really nothing stopping Corey from going to the police right after his encounter with Michael. Michael would have had no way of knowing whether or not Corey would go do that. He had no reason to trust Corey unless it's something with the whole like mind connection shit that they had when he was choking him. Regardless, Michael was neutered. It was not widely appreciated to say the least. The last section of opening predictions that I have is all to do with Michael. My first one being that Michael has disappeared. I don't think that he's been locked up this time. I think that he's just kind of been dormant in hiding, a little bit like Pennywise, you know, Ooh. eating- Ooh. Ah. No one has ever said this, but now nobody can ever tell me, oh, Kylie, you're not a witch. Magic isn't real, blah, blah, I'm a, f I'm, I'm, oh shit. You dare doubt me? You doubt my powers? You mere mortal? I literally, I li Oh shit. I literally said Pennywise. And where does Michael end up in Halloween Ends? Oh, the sewer. Even in my Halloween Ends review, I said, oh, the Pennywiseification of Michael. The I'm so smart. Honestly, it's really hard to guess what Michael is gonna be up to because I don't think that he would have been captured because the whole town came after him, but he just literally killed everyone. But then it's also hard to imagine a world where Michael has been roaming around for like five years or whatever and everyone has hasn't lost their minds. I mean, they did. She was so right for that. Oh my God. Michael has been roaming around and everybody lost their damn minds. I feel like I should give myself two points, one for mentioning Pennywise and the second for saying that. Even if whatever was on the prediction card wasn't right, she was right. Oh. Even if whatever I put on the prediction card wasn't right, I mean, come on. My sixth prediction is that Michael has been captured again. Because this one feels both likely and unlikely to me at the very same time. I think it would be a lot more spooky to open with some exposition that he's just been roaming around silently and hasn't killed anyone for five years and nobody knows why. <laughs> 
Ugh. I'm sorry, I wasn't planning on blowing so much smoke up my own ass, but like, please. That's not really what I wanted, but just with what I was given, only knowing that there was gonna be a time jump, come, I was pretty spot on. Or, and this one doesn't feel super likely, I'm just trying to cover my bases. Maybe Michael is living in his house and he just never comes out. He's dormant, yet again, it's kind of like the Pennywise situation. <laughs> Pennywise, there he is again, but no, she, this was wrong, though, this was wrong. <laughs> I liked to keep my options open. Okay, one thing that was really weird about Halloween ends is the fact that they burned down his house And that was just such a fleeting moment It was literally just a headline going over the like minute-long recap of the whole franchise We just saw a brief shot of it like tacked up onto her wall or something while Lori was giving that annoying monologue I would have liked to have seen that honestly I don't feel like we got enough of those four years kind of filled in at least not enough to satiate me I would have loved to have seen them burn down that house I guess maybe they felt like they had already done too much much fire imagery because they do that in 2018 and kills. 2018 ends in fire at Lori's house and then kills opens with it. But we still didn't see his iconic house one time in this movie and granted we spent a lot of time there in Halloween kills but I don't know still. The house is just such a huge symbol of this franchise and of Michael because even in Halloween kills they brought up yeah well you know he kills a bunch of people and then he goes home. They set up this pattern and then all of a sudden his house is gone. I don't know it kind of messed me up. Alas let's keep going. But it's just where he's happiest and and nobody tries to challenge him because an entire mob went after him and he just hacked them all down. So his house is like condemned, the neighbors all evacuate, um, the surrounding neighborhood, everyone's slowly moving away, so it's kind of just like spreading the rot of his presence. Like he's just been slowly sucking all the life out of the town from his home base. I mean, I mean, I mean. To be very fair, he wasn't in his home, but his rot was spreading. That's the whole reason why everything in Halloween Ends happened, because of all the paranoia. It had infected people, Michael had infected people. Corey would not have accidentally killed Jeremy if he was not infected with this paranoia. Because I think that pre-Michael days, you know, if Corey had been locked in the attic by Jeremy, he wouldn't have broken the door down. I think he was so revved up thinking that, you know, there could be a possible boogeyman in the house, because it was possible at that time. So I don't think the emotions would have been so heightened and he wouldn't have, like, busted down the door and then, you know, killed Jeremy. And then you saw Oscar's mom from Halloween 2018, she hung herself. There was a couple that was found deceased in a car and a a whole bunch of other stuff like that. So his rot was spreading. And then that obviously does go along with the town turning on Lori. So, you know, I'll give it to her. I will. Other than that, with Lori and Michael and Allison, I don't care too much where the other side characters have ended up. And that's <laughs> mostly because we lost almost all of them except for Lindsay in the last movie. So that being said, let's move on to the next section. What information is going to be brought up from the past? Halloween Kills dug really deep and brought back a ton of legacy characters from the past. So I feel like with ends, rather than bringing even more people back, we will learn a lot more history. Did we learn any more history? I mean, okay, let's think. So essentially, David Gordon Green's plan with Michael was to kind of point to his potential past. He sort of used Corey as the vessel with which to make nods to like, oh, maybe this is why Michael ended up the way he did. Which I think is bogus, because Michael has been locked away in institutions since he was, what, like five or six? So didn't love that and then as far as our other characters we didn't really get enough time with them because they were totally sidelined. I feel like right here I'm about to get into some stuff about the characters and like what we would learn about them and I do I feel like I would have had some for Lindsay for sure because Lindsay was one of my favorite characters from Halloween Kills and then she's just a tarot reading bartender in Halloween Ends. She does nothing. I'm like getting mad all over again. I would love if you liked the video and subscribed. It really helps me out a lot and it also lets the algorithm know that you would like to see more videos like this and it lets me know too so I can make more good stuff for you. Okay, so the history of Haddonfield. What do I think that we're going to be learning in Halloween Ends? I think that we're going to be learning a little bit more about Michael's family. Not in the Rob Zombie way where you wondered why he was a killer and then Zombie goes, well, there it is. He was abused. Mystery solved. I think it'll be in a more enigmatic way. <laughs> like his family won't be fully fleshed out by any means. I think we might just get maybe some more flashbacks with them. So add that one to the list, a flashback with Michael's family. She was a little off base on that one. <laughs> 
I'm glad that we didn't do that. I I'm kind of glad. There is a part of me that still like is curious about it because at the end of the day, as much as I say, you know, I love these debates. I love how much of a mystery Michael is. There is still a little part of me that wants to know like why, what? Especially back in 1968 or whenever it was that Michael killed Judith. Rather than that, again, Corey was kind of the vessel through which we explored Michael this go round. Or if it's not a flashback, then his parents or a parent or a cousin or something, they'll return to Haddonfield with some crucial information. Th no, <laughs> no, that is not correct. <laughs> That is not correct. Though I do wonder, why has nobody ever asked you, oh yeah, what happened to Michael's parents? What were they like? Why didn't Dr. Loomis ever get in contact with them? Why were we never given these answers? Because we can't. We don't deserve them. I know that. I know that. I just, I don't know if I can come to terms with it. That would be pretty crazy if Michael's parents returned. I put that on the bingo card? Are you kidding me? They would be in the earth. They would be so far dead. <laughs> Though I do wonder about that. I mean, like Halloween H2O, Halloween 2 from 1981, where were they? What were they doing? I mean, if it were me, right, you know, and my son was kind of the, the embodiment of evil, I suppose I wouldn't really want to show my face. I'd probably get the fuck out of Dodge. Alas, where were they? That has never come up in the entire franchise. Uh, that is not correct. <laughs> in 1965, Michael's parents were killed in a car accident and his little sister was adopted by the Strode family who renamed her Lord. See, if it doesn't happen on screen, it doesn't get established in here. Was the tirade worth it, huh? Was it worth it? You were incorrect. Dummy. Dummy, dummy. Now I wouldn't want them to do it because then, like, what other route could they take besides the whole, oh, grief angle? Because what happens to a person after your child does something like that, right? I was gonna include this as its own prediction, but it's pretty weak because I also thought that maybe his parents would come back and it would just be, like, a fan service kind of moment and they wouldn't really provide any information. It would kind of just be a reiteration of, well, he was such a normal boy until the day he decided to pick up that knife and that mask. Actually, actually, I kind of, I take it back. I take it back. I would have liked it. I would have liked to have seen it. She's right though. Definitely would have just been fan service. Like it would have been pretty pointless. Nonetheless, nonetheless, it would have been just like another little nugget, you know? Not an answer, just another little, you know, debate point. And that would have been fun. But you know, with Halloween ends, we, we got more than enough to debate with that movie. So I substituted that prediction for this one where I think that they might unearth a ton of Dr. Loomis's old files. They did actually give us Dr. Loomis and Halloween Kills, so I don't think that that's unreasonable because they're trying to end this thing once and for all. So I would imagine that they might want to try to gather any and all information that they could, even though they pretty much know everything that they need to about Michael. I mean, obviously something is missing because it's been this long and they still have not gotten rid of him. Damn, damn. You know, that is a complaint that has come up recently that I really wish we got just a little bit of Dr. Loomis and Halloween Ends. I don't think anybody ever even says his name in Halloween ends. It's a real shame because for a lot of people, he is kind of like the backbone of this franchise. He returns for the first six films, well, obviously not Halloween three. And looking back and seeing these predictions and stuff, it almost feels kind of wrong that he was like, just nowhere to be found in Halloween ends. It's weird because I do feel like in a way, Lori became the new Loomis. She was the one that could see something wrong in Corey's eyes. That was very Dr. Loomis coded. So oh, imagine, imagine if Lori had gone back and found Dr. Loomis's file and found all these parallels between Michael and Corey. It wouldn't have to be anything too in-depth, wouldn't have had to give us a whole lot of answers. It wouldn't have had to have been anything crazy, just some little tidbits, just more little nuggets. I love those little nuggets. So I hope that I don't have any more predictions about Dr. Loomis. That would bum me out. And if they either find this in Dr. Loomis's files or if Michael's parents come back, I would think it would be interesting information if it was revealed that Michael was born in his house. This would be a really interesting story thread to me because I'm really interested in the house. I want to know more about it. Rip! Big rip. The house burnt down, babes, don't you know? I already know I'm about to go on a little tangent about the house being the nexus of evil, so let's listen. We got treated to a lot of good moments back in his house with kills, and I think that that was done for a purpose. They even pointed out in Halloween Kills that he always goes back to his house. So this one's a little bit far out there, but maybe another piece of crucial information that would be revealed is that the Myers house is kind of like the nexus of evil. But the reason why Michael was the only member of his family to be affected like that is because he was born there. I wouldn't have been mad about that. 
I, I wouldn't have been mad about that. Again, I don't think that explains at all what Michael is. Why else would a five-year-old suddenly kill his sister? We still never get that answer unless there was an old man in a sewer that lured a young Michael in and choked him out and was like, That'd be so fucking stupid. I don't know, I can't say for certain. I, I probably would have been mad about that too. You know, hands up, I still think that kind of would have been a cool concept. <laughs> I'm not a super big fan of my own prediction with that, but it would just kind of give us a little bit more of a reason as to why he would keep returning to his house. Even if he was just born there, that would be enough of a reason for me. I don't need his house to be the nexus of evil, but it's just really fascinating to me that he always returns there. Yeah, okay, so maybe that was why they burnt it down because now he doesn't have anywhere to return to that mm, maybe that's what it maybe that's what it is i sorry i'm a little the the chaos is real but i'm just like the, the the cogs are turning right now but still there was no connection i i just dislike the fact that in halloween kills they really they found that out they rallied together and they were like oh my god he always goes home and then in ends it's just in casual passing yeah it burned down so i really just need to like let myself speak and explain myself before i, I jump down her throat you know and i do feel like that might be an answer that we get in halloween ends like what is so special about his house and I will have more on his house later when we get to my predictions on the ending of the movie. But this is gonna be my last prediction for the house for now. Maybe there is no reason why he returns to his house. It's just another one of those unsolvable riddles that Michael poses. He goes back to his house and that's just the way that it is. <laughs> Michael loves his house for no reason. <laughs> well, should I give myself that one? Let me know in the comments down below. Should I give myself a point for that? <laughs> I don't know. That was such a dumb prediction. I think it's true though. I don't know. I feel like because maybe Michael was trapped, he was like suspended in the mind of his five-year-old self because that was when he snapped. So that is probably why he would go back to his house. I don't think he loves his house, but I mean, th there was really no reason. So do, do I give it to me? I don't know. I don't know. Let's keep going. Moving on from Michael to some background info on our legacy characters. When I looked up the plot summary of Halloween Kills on Wikipedia and a few other websites, they all say that in the scene where Lori and Officer Hawkins are in the hospital, it's assumed that Officer Hawkins is Karen's father. And even on my rewatch of Kills, I was watching pretty carefully, but all that I picked up on is that, yeah, it's implied that they maybe hooked up once. So I'm just gonna include on my predictions that it's revealed that Officer Hawkins is Karen's Karen's father. Okay, so here's the thing about that. I don't think that it ever actually is addressed in the movies themselves, but Jamie Lee Curtis in interviews has basically confirmed it. She actually said really interestingly, the first day that she worked with Will Patton, um, she came up to David Gordon Green and she was like, I think that he's Karen's father. They had never actually even met each other before they did their first scene. Like they kind of showed up and shook hands like, hello, and then they did the scene. And then Jamie Lee Curtis was like, hmm, light bulb. So it's kind of been confirmed off screen. Like, I don't know if it's actually considered canon, but I think we can since Jamie Lee herself has basically confirmed it. And she did say that that kind of influenced the relationship that she had with Hawkins because she said that, you know, from the beginning in 2018. So that influenced the relationship that Laurie and Hawkins had through kills ends. But it's ultimately not really that important. I didn't even realize that that was missing from Halloween ends and I didn't mind it. Not that it really matters because Karen has passed away, but it just might be information that's brought up if Laurie and Hawkins and Allison, if they all live together or something like that. Let's in fact move on to my plot point predictions. I think that yet again, Lindsay might be one of our girls, like one of the main players in this movie. She was the only legacy character who wasn't a main character to survive. I don't count Officer Hawkins because he's brand new to us. So prediction number 14, Lindsay will be a main character. Ah! She should have been. Maybe I would have been mad if Lindsay went through the same development as Corey, but at least it would have been one of the main characters already established. Not some random sad boy. There's a possibility that she might be the ringleader this time around because Allison has already had her moment of, do you really think that I'm gonna stand here while you go confront the man who killed my father? So we might not get a repeat of that. I lean a little bit more towards her having gotten out of Haddonfield and then getting roped back in somehow. So these next two predictions are kind of like a two for one. So I think Lindsay might become the new ringleader and then also that Allison will then follow the hero's journey. And this would be a hot ticket item right here, but what if she comes back because Lori is killed? <sighs> I, uh, Allison does go through... Uh, 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 
a journey. She goes through a journey. Let's say that. Not the hero's journey by any means, but there is a point where she like turns her back on her destiny, if you will. But being that she is the bloodline of Laurie Strode, she is Laurie Strode, like an extension of her. So her fate and Michael's, they're gonna be tied. They, they just are. I know they kind of like got rid of the whole fate thing in 2018 and in Kills, but being that they are the main characters of a franchise, they are kind of fated. She turns her back on Laurie and then she does end up coming back. Not the hero's journey. I don't, I'm not gonna give myself credit for that, but I feel like there are kind of parallels to what happened in ends. I don't think that Laurie deserves to die in the first or second act and quite honestly the third act either, but that's really the only thing that I could see radicalizing Allison enough to make her want to return to Haddonfield if she's left. Lots of required hypotheticals for that one, but plausible in my opinion. Or the opposite could be true yet again and Laurie has to go on the hero's journey. Maybe after 40 years of being tormented with the belief that Michael has an obsession with you and he's going to come after you and then finding out that that was never the case and then having your daughter, her husband, your granddaughter's boyfriend, family have all those people killed, maybe that would finally be enough for Lori to just throw in the towel. And if that's the case, then our dear Allison would be the ringleader. I mean, I mean, Lori, she kind of did. Not in like a bad way where she was giving up, but kind of in a good way. She threw in the towel on Michael. She threw in the towel on letting fear rule her life. I would kind of give myself that one. She doesn't go on the hero's journey. I don't know why I was so married to that idea. Like, oh, they're gonna go on the hero's journey. But it's like, it's close enough, kind of. <laughs> and Allison, she's not a ringleader of any sort, is she? There is no ringleader of this film. I guess I was thinking that there would be a lot more climactic of a showdown with multiple people taking down Michael because in Kills, it would have you believe that it would take more than 20 people to kill him. Threw that right out the window, didn't they? That also feeds into my whole thing where I used to think that Michael fed on fear because those 20 people surrounding him, if they were all afraid and all threatening him, then that would give him power. Whereas when Lori finally kills him in ends, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but when she finally kills him in ends, she's like no longer afraid. But then in ends, it's also kind of revealed that he gets his power from killing people, or at least that was my interpretation. So I'm still confused. <laughs> Maybe she never stopped looking for Michael. Maybe her grief just turned to rage. Well, 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 Allison's grief did turn to rage, didn't it? I'm gonna give myself a point for that. <laughs> I know it's not on the bingo card, but I mean. And then she gets her grandmother to come out for one last battle with the boogeyman. It's a little bit meta, kind of representative of the younger generations who love Laurie Strode so much that we just keep pulling her back for these movies and putting her through hell. But they also do make a very good team. Like the ending of Halloween 2018, I love because it's just these three women, these three generations, and they're all just beating Michael's ass. And you know what? Now that I think about it more and more, I feel like the ending of 2018 should have been the ending of the whole trilogy. If I can recall, I feel like there was a plan for a sequel to, to 2018, but the way that they made it, they did it in such a way that it could be a standalone film. You know, before the whole trilogy was greenlit, they were waiting to see the success of 2018. And 2018 has a way more climactic ending than ends. Even Kills does too. To my credit though, you know, Allison and Lori do kind of team up in the end. It's mostly just on Lori, but without Allison, you know, Lori could have been killed, I guess, in that last moment. So, you know. Which brings us, dear ladies and gents, to my predictions for the end of Halloween Ends. It's a nice segue because I think that the most reasonable conclusion for the ending of this trilogy is Allison and Lori taking out Michael together. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Feels good being right. This is pretty vague, I know, but I think that we'll probably get some really cool sequence of them just figuring stuff out and taking him down. I don't really know what I mean when I say figuring stuff out because I almost included in my predictions that they would unearth, you know, Dr. Loomis's files and maybe they would find an Achilles heel that Michael has, like a surefire way to kill him. But as I mentioned earlier, I mean, just like take off his head. Everyone's hitting him with bats and Karen stabs him like in the back of the neck or the shoulder or whatever and it's like just cut off his head more on that later. In my review, I did say that I was pretty much satisfied with the final battle between Michael and Lori, but it should have been way longer. And to be fair to her credit, Jamie Lee Curtis, that would have been hard for her. It took them a week to shoot that fight scene as it was. She's older. She had to do a lot of the stunts herself and like, that's tough. So I understand why it wasn't longer. Still think it should have been longer though. I really would have liked more involvement from Allison, but I do get why it was the way that it 
was because for whatever reason this whole franchise has always really come down to like Lori versus Michael. So we have talked a lot about Michael and his house today and I know that they used it for the showdown in Halloween Kills but I don't find it unreasonable that they would go back there for the showdown of Halloween Ends. There was a really big theme of fire in the last two movies and I feel like in Halloween Ends the Myers house will burn down to the ground once and for all. I mean it it, it does it does. Oh, I was right. I was right. I mean, I was wrong, but I was right. The Myers house was burned down, so I get a point. <laughs> I haven't been keeping track at all. These points are rhetorical, but the point is I was right. But this next one, this is the kicker, guys. This is the one I've been waiting to share. In Halloween H2O, spoilers, Lori kills Michael by beheading him. And that was quite honestly the epic moment that should have just completely ended the franchise. So I think that both to service the fans and to create the most logical and satisfying end Ending, I think that Lori and Michael will behead each other. I know, it's the second prediction where Lori dies. We just, we have to prepare for the worst. The reason why I feel pretty strongly that this is how it'll end is because of this line of dialogue in Halloween Kills. Let him come for me. Let him take my head as I take his. No. Maybe the only way he can die is if I die too. I fell for the trick. I fell for the trick, but now looking back on it, I do think that it is just paying homage to H2O because there are so many homages to the franchise franchise in this trilogy, mostly to the original movie, but there are a lot of nods to Halloween 2 and Halloween 3 as well. And you've probably noticed there is still one more space left on this bingo card and you're thinking, well, wait, that was the best prediction I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. What else could there possibly be? Well, I wanted to end on a lighter note and this is a genuine prediction. I think that there will be a nice epilogue, a nice little bow to wrap on the end of the trilogy. I think that Allison is going to survive and I think that she'll put her roots down in Haddonfield and start a family and start a new generation of people who are not scared of Michael anymore. So yeah, we might see her married with a child and a baby, very Hunger Games epilogue style, where she's like, yes, our society used to live in fear of a man named Michael Myers, but your grandma chopped his head off. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, I was wrong. I was wrong, but I I like that idea. I think I would have liked that more. It was nice to see Allison get out of Haddonfield, but I almost feel like it would have been more powerful if she chose to stay. The ending of Halloween ends, it's nice though. I, I do like the ending. There's a little glimmer of hope for Lori. She could maybe be happy. Maybe it would have been a little bit too optimistic, a little bit too positive if Allison has stayed there and you know the town is not scared of Michael Myers anymore. Would have been very cathartic, I think, the way that it was to watch his body drop into a meat grinder, but maybe not so realistic, right? Not a bad prediction, honestly, in my opinion. I think it was a nice one to end on. And that'll do. Those were all of my predictions to Halloween ends. I mean, some of them I was dead on, right? A lot of them were way off base, yes. But let me know some of yours. Did you have some predictions that ended up being right or crazy wrong? Do you wish that any of the predictions that I made were the actual direction that Halloween ends went in? Would love to know. Any and all thoughts, any questions, comments, concerns, put them down below. And again, a huge warm welcome to anybody that has subscribed recently. It's so great to have you. Be on the lookout. More great content coming soon, including a comparison of the original Nightmare on Elm Street to its infant the Miss 2010 remake. And a huge thank you to the people that make this content possible, all my lovely patrons. Just want to let you know how much I appreciate you and your continued support. Without them, I truly would not have the time nor means to produce this content. And also over there, I do post usually like four to six bonus videos every month. So for $5 a month, it's a ton of bonus content. So go join us over there. That'll be linked down below along with all of my other social media. So go nuts, have fun. Let me know what predictions I should make next. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye!